Author's good idea. For for a while, Stanley Lamb Chop was a famous name. Everywhere that Stanley went, people stared and pointed at him. He could hear them whisper, "Over here, over here, Agnes, over here." That be Stanley Lamb Chop. The one that one who caught the sneak thieves and things like that. But after a few weeks, the whispering, the staring stopped. People had other things to think about. Stanley did not mind being famous. Being famous had been fun, but enough was enough. And then came a further change, and it was not a pleasant one. People began to laugh and make fun of him as he passed by. Hello, super skinny. They would shout and even brooded things about the way he looked. Stanley told his parents how he felt. Is that? The, it's the other kids. I'm. I mostly mind. He said. They don't like me anymore because I'm different. Flat. Shame on them, Mrs. Lambchop said. It. It is. Wrong to dislike people for who for their shapes or their religion, for what, for that matter, of the color of their skin. I know, Stanley said. Oh, only maybe it's impossible for everyone to like everyone. Perhaps said Mrs. Lambchop, but they can try. Later that night, Arthur Lambchop was woken by the sound of crying. In the darkness, he crept across the room and knelt by Stanley's bed. Are you okay? He asked. Go away, Stanley said. Don't be mad at me, Arthur said. You're still mad because I let you get tangled the day you were my kite, I guess. Skip it, will you, Stanley said. I'm not mad. Go away, please. Let's be friends. Arthur couldn't help crying a little too. Oh, Stanley, he said. Please tell me what's wrong. Stanley waited for a long time before he spoke. The thing is, he said, I'm just not happy anymore. I'm tired of being flat. I want to be a regular shape again, like other people. But I have to go on and being flat forever. It makes me sick. Oh, Stanley, Arthur said. He dried his tears on a corner of Stanley's sheet and and could think of nothing more to say. Don't talk about what I just said. Stanley told him. I don't want the folks to worry. That would only make it worse. You're brave, Arthur said. You really are. He took hold of Stanley's hand. The two brothers sat together in the darkness being friends. They were both still sad, but each one felt a little better than he had before. And then suddenly, though he was not even trying to think, Arthur had an idea. He jumped up and turned the light on and turned the light on and ran to the big storage box where toys and things were kept. He began rummage in the box. Stanley sat up in the bed to watch. Arthur plunged aside a football and some lead shoulder, soldiers and a, airplane models and lots of wooden blocks. And then he said, aha. He, he had found what he wanted. At an old bicycle pump, he held it up, and Stanley and, and he looked at each other. Okay, Stanley said at last, but take it easy. He put the end of the long pump hose in his mouth and clapped his lips tightly about it so that no air could escape. I'll go slowly, Arthur said. If it hurts or anything, wiggle your hands at me. He began to puff at first, 
noticing nothing happened except Stanley's cheeks blanch but a bit. Arthur watched his hand, but there were no wiggle signal, so he pumped on. Then suddenly, Stanley's top half began to swell. It's working! It's working! shouted Arthur, pumping away. Stanley spread his arms so that the air could get around inside him more easily. He got bigger and bigger. The buttons of his pajama top burst off. Pop! 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 A moment more, and he was all around it. Head and body, arms and legs, but not his right foot. The foot, that foot stayed flat. Arthur stopped pumping. It, it's like trying to do the very last bit of those long balloons, he said. Maybe a, maybe a shake would help. Stanley shook his right foot twice and a little whooshing sound, it swelled out to match the last one. There stood Stanley Lambtop as he used to be, as if he'd never been flat at all. Thank you, Arthur, Stanley said. Thank you very much. The brother was shaking hands when Mrs. Mr. Lambtop strut into the room with Mrs. Lambtop right behind him. We heard you, Stanley, Mr. Lambtop, up and talking when you ought to be asleep, eh? Shame on. George said, George said, Mrs. Lambshaw, Stanley Brown's again? You're right, said Miss, Mr. Lambshaw, noticing good for you, Stanley. I'm the one who did it, Arthur said. I blew him up. Everyone was terribly excited and happy, of course. Mrs. Lambshaw made hot chocolate to celebrate the occasion, and several toasts were drink to Arthur for his cleverness. When the little party was over, Mr. and Mrs. Lambchop tucked the boys back into their beds and kissed them, and then they turned out the light. Good night, they said. Good night, said Stanley and Arthur. It had been a long and tiring day. Very soon, all the Lambchops were asleep. The end. That is the end of Flat Stanley. Hope you like and subscribe.